Hello everybody, welcome to the Football fill in another weekend jam-packed full of Premier League action. We absolutely love it. Starting with that Arsenal game, 4.30pm, that's the sort of stuff we want to see, don't we? Fantastic win for Arsenal, 3-1 title contenders, we will see. In other news though, Chelsea, disappointing, 4-2 loss to Wolves, they are absolutely flying. Fantastic win for Manchester United and goalies just keep getting fouled. What's going on? Right then, lads, welcome to the show. Happy Monday morning. How was your weekend, Mark? Good, Man United won. You happy? Two in a row, happy, yeah. Yeah, it is two in a row, actually. Yeah, fantastic. Watto? Loved it. Football-filled weekend. Lots of games. Um, yeah, plenty to talk about. Don't get now better. Do you get on your bike at all? Uh, on Thursday with Big Tom. Did you? Yeah. How many miles did you do? We did 55k. That'll do. Enough for a few beers? Enough for a few beers this week. There you go. Right then, lads, we've got to start with the Arsenal game. Um... Matt, before the match, who did you think was going to win that one? Because I, I wasn't quite sure, to be honest. It was a big game, wasn't it? Well, I thought I'd gone a bit niche by saying Liverpool. But yeah. you know what? The vast majority of people were Liverpool. And even Arsenal fans, when I was talking to them on Saturday night, they were going, oh, I don't fancy this. And I, I really think that we know that... Look what Luton did at Newcastle. Look what Newcastle did at Villa. This Premier League is competitive. Arsenal at the Emirates, writing them off. And I think that it was very obvious that Arsenal and Arteta throughout the week... Obviously, you could see the way they reacted. Maybe we'll talk about that in a minute. But they were clearly in a, of a mindset that this was a cup final. Yeah. And if they lose it, they're out of the title race. And I think they just wanted it more. I think Liverpool walked into the trap of confidence. It was like it was, it was actually like it was at Anfield. Liverpool, Arsenal basically played the low block and countered. And Liverpool had that high line. And it's quite naive to go and do that at the Emirates. I understand it. I think it was predictable that would happen because Liverpool were playing so well. But it played into Arsenal's hands perfectly and they wanted it more and they were the more dangerous what, side. What, what was it a case of? Liverpool played poorly or were Arsenal just so much better? I think when you look at the end of the game, I think Liverpool had two shots on target the whole yeah. game. It's not enough at the Emirates, no. is it? And I just think that every time Liverpool got the ball, you saw Martinelli, Saka sprinting back. At times they had like everybody on the ball, made it very compact. Liverpool couldn't play through them and... Then when they got the ball, they were so combative in the midfield. Declan Rice, Jorginho. I mean, Liverpool found it hard to string passes together and win it back and then looking at getting that ball in behind to like Martinelli. And I just think it was... It, it was look, we, we were talking about West Ham next week and neither of us had predicted Arsenal to win. Yeah. But that's because West Ham, won't, West Ham will play a low block, won't they? And, and, and I think it just suited Arsenal and Arsenal were up for it. And I think Liverpool just probably walked into the trap a little bit. Watto, I'm glad you're here. By the way, Dave Watson, uh, former Premier League goalkeeper, goalkeeper coach, not only for the England national team, uh, Norwich, Birmingham City, who else am I missing out on there? Southampton. Yeah. Um, so he knows what he's talking about. And thankfully he's here with us today because we're going to be talking about goalkeepers, OK? Watto, the game at half-time, one all. Liverpool hadn't even had a shot on target because it was an own goal. So I want to talk to you about the goal that went in, the Liverpool goal at the end of that first half. Um... Saliba is kind of shepherding the ball back to Raya. Um, break it down for me, basically. Give me your point of view on that. Yeah, look, I think as, as soon as the ball comes inside him, Saliba, as all defenders now, want to use the body. And, he, and he's actually probably thinking, if I use my body enough, we might be able to play a couple of short passes and get out. But it all that ends up getting really tight towards Raya, but Raya never takes charge of the yeah, situation. Yeah. And I think in the end, he's, he's coming to get a little scoop on it. I think if you're playing in goal, or even going back to my time, you're sliding out and you, you, you're just coming in to take the lot of it yeah, there. Yeah. And the, the defender's kind of doing his job to protect that space for you to come. But because Raya didn't have no momentum into the ball and he's waiting a little bit, Martinelli put enough pressure on for the ball to end up in there. But I think the defender's got to take more responsibility earlier on in the yeah, piece yeah, yeah. and not bring the goalie into the equation, if I'm honest. I, I think it's kind of similar for me in both scenarios. So the Van Dijk one with Alisson in the second half as mm. well. I just think that the I I, 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 I I feel for the goalies a little bit because the goalies have to be a mind reader as well. Yeah, yeah. So especially with the first goal for the for the Liverpool goal, I don't think Raya can read that he's going to try and shepherd that all the way back there. Do you know no. what I mean? Well, if he runs out and Saliba goes to kick it, it could even be more chaotic. Exactly. It? Yeah. And uh, I, I was watching Saliba's body language as well, and not once did Saliba look. No. At but Raya. That, that's the problem. The longer the action keeps yeah. getting on. Raya's on his heels because he's not quite sure what Saliba's doing. Saliba's 
bodied him and he's in charge, but they're getting closer and closer towards the goal. Yeah. But Ray is not quite sure whether he's coming or not because Saliba's still in charge of that's, a situation. That's body language, though, and just like I said, even a little look, a little subtle look from Saliba to his goalkeeper lets the... Honestly, just that little glint tells you all you need to know as a goalie. It's, am I going to come for this? Are you going to keep shepherding it or are you just going to kick it? Mm. I can tell that just from the way that you look at me. It's genuinely, it's mad. So I, in that scenario, I think what Mikhail Arteta would have done at half-time is that basically gone, William, just kick it, yeah? Just get rid of the thing, eliminate the... Pro- even if it goes out for a corner, yeah. don't care. Just kick the thing there. But because Reyes has got no chance. Because got, it, yeah, it, exactly. As it's getting tighter, he can't get any momentum to... To get to the ball, yeah. he's he's waiting for it as much as Saliba's waiting for him to come for it. Yeah. And uh, and the thing is, carnage uh, ensues. Fair play to Arsenal because when that goal went in, it proper took the wind out of the sails, didn't it? Like everybody yeah, inside yeah. that Emirates Stadium was just like, seriously, like they haven't even had a shot on target, and we're drawing one all at half time. And then second half kicks off. Fair play to Arsenal. They came out and they just carried on the same pretty much. Liverpool five or ten minutes little spell, but then Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal. Talk to me about the second goal then, Watto. So, ball over the top. Van Dijk is again trying to almost sort of shepherd it through. Alisson comes out and that's where we have the mistake. I, I thought um, if, if you look at the three goals that Liverpool concede, and it's probably never ever in his career will you say this, I think Van Dijk were responsible. Had a part to play. In all three of them yeah, goals. Yeah. The first goal... He's miles out of position, the, isn't he? Yeah. He's either got to go all the way in and engage... Yeah or drop off and the space is not there for the Havertz to get through on goal. The second goal, it's just a long pump forward. And again, the modern way of the centre-half, I think if you look back at the video, it just edit down to his partner, Kanate, and they'll be playing out and getting away with it. But as usual, six foot four, lets it bounce, thinks he can muscle Martinelli, and nine out of ten, he would have muscled Martinelli and Alisson would have come out, chested it down, and he'd have played safe to somebody. But everything worked against him. He should have just headed the ball. He lets it bounce. Martinelli, fair play to him, it's not a foul. Just gives him a little nudge at the right time. It's so hard for the goalie to second-guess that uh, Van Dijk's going to let the ball bounce. And as soon as that ball bounces, you're not quite sure. Martinelli just nudges him at the right time, and Alisson comes to try and scoop up the danger. help, Help him out. And he just catches Van Dijk's yeah, thigh, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, Which yeah. then makes him miss the ball and Martinelli puts it in an open goal. Never, ever, because they have been two phenomenal signings for Liverpool. Alisson, the best goalie in yeah. the league, potentially, for sure. You saw Havertz one-on-one, you thought he was going to save it, didn't you? Yeah, you knew I, mean, it. I look, knew he was going to save it. Look, Saka yeah. has a great touch and it's a good finish. But you were never backing Havertz in that situation. Yeah. And Van Dijk... Probably the best ever January signing. Made. I think. I think again, though. I think Jurgen Klopp probably would have looked at that goal, and he could be replaying it today and showing them, sitting them both down. And he could have picked about four or five times where you say, "Just clear it, just head it, just clear it, just head it." Allison, don't even get involved. Stay back there. Let let Van Dijk just take control of all. That. But it's just a the the second the ball bounces, that's it. Yeah, that's why they always say, "Do not let the ball bounce. Do not let that ball bounce." Because as soon as it bounces. Little nudge, little little bubble, anything like that, all bets are off. But at the end of the day, Arsenal probably worthy winners, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think across the whole game, Arsenal absolutely deserved it. Uh, I, I found it a little bit funny when Arteta was running around like that. What do you make of that celebration? I, 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 I am a big fan of Arteta, yeah. more so than some Arsenal fans, it feels at times. But I, when I saw him doing that, I'm not an Arsenal fan, so I did find it a bit cringy. But when you take it as it is, they've clearly built that up massive. And, and you know, you've got Odegaard taking the photo. They're staying on the pitch. Carragher's telling him to get off the pitch. And I think at the end of the day, football's too robotic and I'm not going to criticise players for enjoying a win like that. The thing is, it will kick him in the arse at some point because yeah. you make a big deal out of that and they're, gonna, they're not going to win the league. So... Enjoy it. it, you know. Liverpool. That, that's Liverpool's first loss of the season. I'm not counting the Spurs loss because we all know what happened there. So, and 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 they deserve to beat them. So it's a big result for Arsenal, and I think it's a bit of a vindication of the fact that so many people wrote them off. Yeah. And they are a title contender. I don't think they'll win it, but they're a better team than people were giving them credit to. And they played well yesterday. Yeah, they did play, well. and they stuck to what they like to play as as well. Yeah. Like I said, I think I was listening to the commentary afterward, and Gary Clichy was actually really good, and he said. 
just when you watch Arsenal, you can see they've got a style of play and they stick to it and they believe in it and they commit and they just do that robotically now. And that is the sign of a very good manager, isn't it? I want to talk about the celebrations, though. What if you were on that Arsenal on that Arsenal bench as goalie coach? Would you be watching those celebrations? Going, come on, lads, just calm it down. Or do you just let them get lost in it for uh, there and there? I, I think. You, you can play it both ways. I just think tactically he did Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp and I just think the emotion of the day, knowing that he'd not only beat him football-wise, but I think he'd beat him tactically yeah. and he had built the game up for sure because of what happened at the end of last season that had a poor run over Christmas. It were a big game and there's nothing wrong with your team seeing that your manager can show that emotion and there's a you know you're so pent up on the side you're waiting for the whistle to blow you score the third goal it's it's yeah. game over oh, game it's one, boom thank God. and and the shackles are off and actually we want to keep the emotion and things like that but i think he had done a real good job on liverpool yesterday tactically as a manager and i think that's where van dijk gets pulled out of position for the first goal yes it's a mistake on the second goal and you're talking about letting the ball bounce. That's why Kanati gets a soft first yellow yeah, card because yeah. he lets it bounce. And look, on the third goal, Van Dijk never comes across because 99 out of 100, he thinks he's blocking it or else Alisson's not getting beat. But that's the way he's always defended since he's been in the Premier League. He never likes getting exposed in the wider areas. He'll always try and defend the middle of the goal, get a block or trust his goalie to make a save. Yeah, true that. Uh, we're going to talk about Chelsea Wolves in a minute. Quickly, though, for you. Um, does that change your opinion on who finishes or challenges City for the title? Do you think Arsenal will now go above Liverpool or do you think Liverpool will still be the main contender? I think Liverpool will still be the main contender. I like this question because I think yesterday, the the, the real, real big winners of yesterday's game was mm. probably Man City. Man City are watching that result going, thank God, get in there, keep Liverpool pegged back. I think, I think psychologically, Man City are ahead of Arsenal, and I think Arsenal probably know that as well. And I think Man City, if they go and win their game tonight, they're right at hot on the heels of everybody else. Um, so it's a bit of a blow for Liverpool yesterday, really. That 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 gap would have been, I think, it would have been eight points between them and Arsenal yesterday, and that is massive. That is a proper sort of that's a that's a kick in the ribs for Arsenal if they lose that game. But it was a fantastic game. I enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it, and it it opens the title race up a little bit more, at least. Anyway, uh, like I said, I want to talk about um, Chelsea. Um, before we talk about how poor Chelsea were, though, we've got to give some love to Wolves. And mm. as an ex-West Brom player who's been there for seven, eight years, played 100-odd game, couple 100-odd games, sorry, um, I, I want to say well done to Wolves because they're currently 10th in the league. Yeah, They've just beaten Chelsea 4-2 away. And if you couple the fact that with the fact that they've had some seriously bad luck this season, mm. Gary O'Neill is doing an incredible job, isn't he? Well, it? we played them on Thursday night and um, Man United played really well for an hour. Like, we basically played them off the park and then dodgy penalty made the subs United haven't got the squad so Wolves came back into it thought they got a point we beat them and everyone's like it's only Wolves and I was like it's not only Wolves Wolves are a good team every time I've watched them this season so I was quite I mean I'm sorry Chelsea fans but I was quite happy that Wolves went and spanked them because it justified that actually United played well against them and Wolves are a good team and they're, we've been t- talking about them on the on, on the fill in for week for months. They're, they're very energetic. Yeah. They're very well organised. Gary O'Neill's got them playing expansive football. They've always struggled to score goals, and I think they still do it on occasion. But they're better at it this year, and um, he's got them right at it. Came in a week before the start of the season. No pre season. No I mean, for me, he's no a, transfers. You, you probably should give him another six seven points because of bad VAR decisions, which would put them about sixth. Yeah, I think he. He's a low-key sort of underrated manager of the season contender, what he's done. And, you know, they beat Chelsea twice. Um, should have beat us on the opening day. Yeah. Uh, I think I think, I think think Wolves are massively underrated. Yeah, what do you think about the job Gary O'Neill's doing? No, proper teammate and proper manager. I think Chelsea are my dark horses and I spoke very highly of Pochettino. He had a full pre-season with that team. Uh, Gary O'Neill had two days with Wolves. And if you compare the two teams now, mm. forget the finances... One looks like a team of individuals, yeah. one looks like a proper well-coached team. So fair play to him and hats off to him. And I thought Neto and Kuna yesterday were a class above. And if Chelsea didn't have Palmer, they've got nothing. Yeah. What's going on at Chelsea then? What I, I, you know, Because not only has he had a full pre-season, no Europe, they're like, oh, we've got all week on the training ground. Yeah. Well, both of you, you're both uh, in that situation. Because to me, it looks like it's a, 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 a... You know, you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. 
You bring these players in. I don't think they're good enough. Mm. They're on big wages, yeah. big contracts. Yeah. They don't look That's interested. the problem there. That's it. But it's, a, it's a team of kids, yeah. for one. You've got probably one or two kind of senior heads in there. But the fact that Thiago Silva's never been given the captain's armband, mm. never been given the captain's armband, tells me that he's probably not the guy to go shouting or ranting and raring and even... I, I'm not going to say doesn't care, but he, he, he's obviously not built that well, way. Well, his missus is on the missus platform cares, yeah. last night. She wants to manage your sack, doesn't she? Yeah, she's, she wants, she's not happy. She wants to take charge. She'll do it instead. Um, but that tells me that they have got a lot of kids and there's no real leaders in there. Conor Gallagher being given the, the <sighs> armband. You've got Reese James getting given the armband. You trying know to sell him as well. You, you know he's going to get injured a lot of the time. And when you give these kids massive, long, eight-year contracts... They they take their eye off the boil, cut off the ball. Sorry, they do. They just they, they think well, sweet. I've got but I've got I've got ten million quid that I'm about to earn in the next couple. Three the thing years. for Pochettino is he's always brought teams and clubs together, and when he's had the younger players, they've all really resonated around him, yeah. and he's been the father figure for him, and he's created something. But they just look like a team. I said they're just individuals. That there's yeah. nothing there, and for they've the time no he's got play, on on the training ground and what they're doing. I really, f I think there's two managers under massive pressure in the Premier League, mm. Pochettino for one, and unfortunately for you and Roy Hodgson yeah. yeah. for two. I remember um, saying in the summer because you were like saying they'll do well, and I was like, I think Pochettino is the guy before the guy. I think he'll take them back to top four, which they bloody love now. That would be a good season, and then you go and get another guy. The fact that he can't, they're in the bottom half. He can't. Get it's February. He can't get a tune out of them. No. Well, against Liverpool the other night, they got absolutely pumped, like yeah. pumped, pumped, battered. In fact, well, they're right? going to that cup final, don't they? In what three, four weeks' time. Yeah. I mean, you can't see anything other than a Liverpool, a Liverpool stroll, yeah. can you? you know? I think. I, I think if they lose that game, here's a question. Then uh, I wouldn't sack him because I think look at Potter, look at Tuchel, the squad. Bring a new manager, and you still got the same problems. Yeah. But I think Chelsea have got huge problems. Would Would you? I Thank think you. he could be gone by the, after that. If they lose that final, they'll be in the bottom half. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I Got think Villa in the cup on Wednesday at Villa. Yeah. I think um, I, don't, I don't think they're going to sack him before that game, even if they lose uh, the remaining Premier League games before then. But the the cup final is the one. I think they'll hold on to him till then. If they win it, fantastic. It's probably get, uh, gives him a, a stay of execution till the end of the season. But if he does lose that final, it, I, I wouldn't have thought. Apparently, he'd be Jose too long. Mourinho's got a tent outside now. <laughs> yeah, you're not with wrong. a banner he's saying Jose in. Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's got one at Chelsea. He's got one at Man United. Yeah. He wants to go back to Spurs. Where does he want to go? Oh, I don't know about. Yeah, Anywhere, <laughs> Chelsea, fan, Chelsea fans had taken back. United fans. Oh, last the one week, John Terry's assistant, wasn't they? That's, last that's week, ticket. United fans were saying bring him back. You'd see him at the weekend, yeah. bigging up Fellaini. I says this is exactly why I don't want him back. <laughs> He'll just get a load of older players. <laughs> uh, he's, I love Mourinho, but I'd actually like him to go to Chelsea, not United. Chelsea. I'd but love I to don't watch know that. what the answer is for Chelsea. No, if no. they, I mean, look, Potter, good manager. Tuchel, good matter manager. Pochettino, I think, is a good manager. But what's next if you if three guys like that fail? They're screwed um, as well. Financially, they're screwed because they've got all this money spread out over eight years, which means that every year they've spent a lot of their money already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they're trying to sell Conor Gallagher. For me, he's their best player with Palmer. Yeah, yeah. They put all their eggs in the basket of and signing crap. these players and, and hoping, hoping, and that, a manager hoping can that their do potential something. ability is going to be incredible. But if, the, if they're not leaders, if they're not characters, if no. they're not people who want to go out on the pitch and win and bite and like really grind out results, then you're struggling because that we'll, is what will get you results. That's why Wolves get results, because they work hard. Well, they got, work harder than you. You've got Casido, Badashil, Gusto, Mudrik. There's a lot more. All young lads coming into London yeah. on seven-year contracts, on time. big wages, yeah. going, yeah, I'm in the same boat. You know, where's the, where's the hunger? Well, I think a top half finish for Chelsea is probably a good season for them as it stands at the minute. Uh, we've got to talk about Newcastle, though, um, and why can they not defend at home? Um, this was a fantastic game, by the way. Four-all draw at home to Luton, who I've got, again, talking about Wolves and giving them a massive shout-out. We've got to give Rob Edwards a big shout-out for what the job that he is doing at Liverpool. Uh, Eight Luton. goals in two games. Eight goals in two games. And not only that, today... I woke up today and the Buckies are now saying that Luton are not one of the favourite three to go down in the Premier League. That is fantastic. What a job, what are you doing? Yeah, incredible. I mean, the, the game midweek against Brighton, nobody saw that coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's not many teams in the next 10 years who'll go to Newcastle and score four goals. Nope. From home. Um, I watched the extended highlights of it. I think they deserved... <laughs> probably to win that game they had a massive chance deep into yeah. injury time I thought Barkley ran the show and mm -hmm. I think it's him that plays the diagonal ball uh, for the chance really late on in the second half um, 
they were excellent. I thought Ross Barkley were excellent. But, you know, they're going to be a little bit disappointed that they concede four goals at, at the same time. But they've got some belief, they've got some momentum. And if a Forest drops some points with the fair play rules and, ever, and don't overturn their thing, I think they've got a lot of things that's in their favour now. And I think they're riding on some real good momentum. But they've got good players. They've got good, experienced Premier League players. And Ross Barkley looks like a player from 10 years ago now. Yeah, yeah, he's been a fantastic signing. I, I, I think Ross Barkley always had that in him. I think he got lost a little bit, didn't he? You know, the, oh, the Everton, he looked like he was going to grow. He, he kind of, it just got lost a little bit. Mm. Again, it's the same sort of thing. Well, that's when, what happens when you go to Chelsea. Exactly that. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it's true, though, seriously. When you sign a young kid who is kind of really impressionable still... Mm moves to London, you give him a big five, six-year contract on silly money, you take your eye off the He ball. was so good at Everton as well. He I looked know. like he was... Because he's so quick, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. so f- uh, tenacious, and then he's got a pass and a shot, and it's great to see him sort of back doing what he's doing. And I, I think Luton just, just, just don't know what you're going to get, but from a Newcastle point of view... What do you think about that? I, I, I think a lot. Of, to be honest, with you, honestly, I think a lot of it has to do with the goalkeeper. With Nick Pope getting injured, should have got there. I, I think it, it would have been perfect. Yeah. Genuinely, they stuck with the Pravka, and I'd never fancied it. I, I, don't get me wrong. I think he's a good goalkeeper, but I think when you lose somebody with the of the authority. experience and the authority and the commanding of of Nick Pope, it just sends a shockwave throughout the whole team. They've had they've had injuries all over the pitch all season long, but that one in particular for me is the one that really reverberates through the team and makes them go. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a struggle. To I us. think goalkeepers are massively underrated. You know, look at Forest last year. Did you just say that? Yeah. No, but but I think oh, but I've mate, noticed you, it you, this year. We're, we're going to convert you. You can. Have oh, I'm, 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 I'm you learning. Want. No, I'm learning. <laughs> we watch me on the watch alongs. I'm telling you, he's got to step forward here, there, and everywhere. But I've seen it with this year with De Gea, and you bring an honour in who's a good goalkeeper, but he just doesn't fill me with any confidence. Even with Forest, like you know, we've spoken about Matt Turner a lot. Mm. He's a good lad, but. Last year they had Henderson, they had that yeah. Navas. I think that you're right with Newcastle. It's it's people see the Pravka making these saves and go, yeah, but it's it's about the personality. Oh, it's isn't everything it? else. And, and, it's and everything else. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm not a big fan of Pickford, but he has got a personality yeah, at Everton doubt. and he gets by off that. And I think you're right. I think Newcastle just um, if you stuck a Pope back in there. Or, or you stuck it a hair in there, yeah. I guarantee they wouldn't have conceded four goals. Who who knew it, eh? Who knew it? Goalies are important. Who well, look at Alisson at amazing. Liverpool, isn't it? Right, well, talking about goalkeepers then, um, I want to talk about Spurs. I want to talk about mm. Vicario Watto. Yep. Um, and we've spoke about this for the last, I think, maybe two or three weeks on the football fill-in, um, that the PGMOL have made a rod, a massive rod, for their own back by letting, um, basically, goalkeepers get fouled, by letting players, attackers get their backs in, like give them a little bit of a budget, a little bit of a nudge here and there, and they've just they're allowed the goal to stand. It started with James Trafford a few weeks ago, and we've had one every week since. And it happened at the weekend with Vicario, didn't it? And until the rules change, you'll have it again since. Yeah. But Everton, I thought, took advantage of it. They've been really good on set plays. I think this whole weekend were massive on set plays. I've never seen as many, probably, goals yeah. all weekend with set plays. But if you look at the Vicario and the Everton situation... The first two corners, Tarkovsky stands on him and he makes it really tough. And Tarkovsky, the big guy, big, as you know. Big, big old, him. big head. And And obviously, the way Spurs set up, that he's got to deal with that. But it's in his mind. Then Harrison comes and stands on him, which has not got the same physical presence, but yeah. there's something there. And it's unbelievable for me to watch it. But the goal that comes, Everton don't start with anybody on him. Yeah, he, and I think quickly, Vicario yeah. thinks... He can breathe. Yeah. I'm free. And he actually gets sucked underneath the ball a little bit. Yeah. And Harrison comes from his blind side. I don't even think he knows he's there. And just drifts into him. And in that moment, the ball's on its way. He's got sucked under it a little bit. Harrison's behind him. And there is contact for sure. Yeah, he, but he backs not, into him. A yeah, bit. He does. He but I just think because he's not planted on him and it's all in a little bit of a movement and Vicario didn't see him. Yeah. I don't think it's a foul, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. And obviously Everton have targeted the area and it's a goal again. And ultimately, Everton really are, are hanging on in the league through the set-piece goals. Yeah. And obviously they score last kick of the game with another set-piece. And that just shows you the game. Rich Allison scored two goals against his former team. There's a wide free kick, last action of the game. Probably the hardest position to be is either front of the line or last man in the line because you're in charge. Yeah. He doesn't drop in with the rest of the line and he lets Branthwaite come off the back of him 
it's a goal and um, Spurs have been done on two set plays. Everton have scored two set plays. And as I said, if you look at the points that they've probably got from set plays, they're, 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 I think the second best in the league at the minute on them. But I think for Vicario, I think it was just a moment where he breathed a sigh of relief and in a millisecond later, that's the life the of the goal that's gone. This, this is the details, like Mark, honestly, this is the details of how important set pieces are and set piece coaches. And But then... There has to be a point where when the players go over the white line, once they've crossed over that white line, right, when there's a player who's allowed to stand on the goalkeeper, so the fact that the fact that the lad can peel off and just stand on the goalkeeper is criminal, right? He's absolutely criminal. He, the, the defender, anybody who's in there, has to know that he has to take that player away from the goalkeeper. Because to the goalie, as soon as that ball is on the way, if there's a player getting into you, you've got no purchase, have you? You've got no momentum. You can't get going and try and get... But it's so hard to do. So this is going to have to be a thing now where goalies have to really take charge of it. Is Oi, make sure he doesn't come and stand on me. Make sure he doesn't back into me. Referee, have a little watch of this. We'll just make everybody know well, set, about set it, Set-piece coaches are going to potentially have to change the setup. They're going to have to, aren't because they? Because if the goalie is not going to get the protection that you normally think yeah. you're going to get, A, from a referee, or B, from the VAR, you might have to change your setup to put somebody in there to protect him. But what that causes then is, if you start... Like, when I was working at Southampton, we had five zones, we had three markers, we had one short, we had one on the edge of the box, because you don't want to vacate the edge of the box. But the goalies we'd got had got big personalities, yeah. big presence... And I wanted them to deal with it. Alex but McCarthy, you, Fraser Forster. But you're still adjusting your position or your zonal setup in that position. And at certain points, the, the whole idea of not marking on the goalie is A, you're wanting a foul, but as soon as that ball's delivered, we're pushing up. So anybody near the goalie on a contact, offside. they're offside. Yeah. So, so philosophies are going to have to change. We, we, look, we spoke about Man United and their set pieces. When Anana makes the save yesterday, they end up with two guys spun back onto the line. So you're never going to get an offside, but you're also going to get the interference with a goalie, but you're never going to get it given because United spin two guys back onto the post. Yeah. But I think set piece coaches are going to have to be reanalyzing the things because... The referees and the VAR are not going to protect the goalies as much now. Well, do, do you think it was a foul? Difficult. I do. I think um, as a fan and not as a goalkeeper, I, I, I was having this argument at the weekend and then you get a lot of people saying it's a foul, a lot of people saying it's not the foul. That's irrelevant to me. I think it's become the Wild West. I think the PGMOL have made a rod for their own back here. I think there's two things. One, he'd given a foul for the same thing five minutes before. Yeah. And then five minutes later, it's not a foul. So again, like red cards, like handballs, as, as, as the spectator, you've lost consistency. You can't honestly say it's a foul or it's not a foul because we see them given and not. And the second thing is, reminds me of a bit of the Rory de Lapp throw. It's almost like now, let's put these corners in on yeah, the keeper. Right on top, yeah. It's not actually nice to watch. No. You know, a good corner to the six-yard box, boom, is a good, good yeah. corner. But this is like... The PGMO, they don't they don't think about what they're doing. They're now encouraging something that you'd want you'd, you used to see Wimbledon do. Yeah, it's it's like let's let's crowd the goalkeeper like we did in the early nineties. <laughs> and you know, remember them throw-ins from Wimbledon? Horrible, Flick it yeah. on first ball, Horrible. keeper comes, it's in. Wimbledon have scored, and I'm like, you know, it's the beautiful game. It's a great league, and I think they've. Done. I think the biggest travesty is that that was a foul before Christmas and now it's not. And it's unfair on keepers and it's unfair on the spectator. But they've changed it before. They, You've they, been they, reading the goalie's Bible this but, weekend, but they, mate. But I said that they've literally changed the rule halfway through the yeah, season. Have, like, that Trafford thing that's why you, changed the that, rule. That's why you can't do it, can you? No, you know, we can't. We can argue, I think, what it, uh, Villa had a foul on Fotheringham, Chef United, when he, he did pull his arm and the goal got done just before yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And um, that's a foul. Alison on uh, yeah. Kanji, yeah, and, wasn't and, it? And, yeah. and they're Johnny fouls, but they've taken it too far the other yeah. way now. Mm. And any contact, they're not giving a foul, yeah. to, to be honest with you. But I thought, as I said, Vicario got sucked under it a little bit yeah. and it's so hard for a goalie working back and yeah. trying to work back quickly. Yeah. And when there's somebody there who actually is not really blocking you, but he's there... He'd got no chance. I think if you're a goalkeeper that's a little bit weak on crosses, which Vicario is, I mean, Alisson, you can try and give him a nudge. He's, he's, he's big he's enough and experienced so, yeah. enough to sort of deal with it, isn't he? But if you're a, if you're a goalkeeper that's a little bit, you know... It, uh, I'd, I'd just say it's a little bit of an experience, but I totally agree with you. I think it was a foul. I totally agree. I think it was a bit of a foul, and they've played for it. And fair play to them, though. They've played to do that. They've played to... Yeah, it's, it's a tactic. Yeah, it's you're a referee, though. Friday. You should be switched on. If it's one incident and you go, oh, I'm not so sure... But everyone can see what Everton are doing. They're, yeah. they're, they're actually Without trying well, to but, impede but the goal. That's why I think they missed it, because on the first three actions, twice Tarkovsky and then the third time Harrison, they were right on his toes. Yeah. 
and he just changed and he just drifted in at that last bit and I think it caught Spurs and the ref and everybody. Well, well, I think they can't knock know. Everton though. Everton no, are playing the game. They've, yeah. they've got a game plan and they but work on the tactics. And Daishi at Burnley at Everton, them in swinging set pieces, oh. that that hasn't changed oh. and it's brutal to defend yeah. as a goalie or a defender. It doesn't matter whether you're man mark, you've got a couple of zones, you've got six zones, it is tough. If the ball's good enough and somebody gets a run, you're screwed, honestly, you are screwed. And when you've got big James Tarkowski with his slab head coming, <laughs> pounding through as well. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, it was a fantastic result for Everton. They're going to need every point they get because yep. we're still not sure about with... Uh, with I want to shout out Tarkovsky as well because he's wearing the Predators. They're a lovely, centre back yeah. wearing a predator. Oh, you've got to be a player, haven't you? Yeah, you've got to be a player, player. right? Don't you be knocking him around. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's a cultured he's, player. He doesn't normally just smack it, does he? No, God, no, 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 no. Uh, and also, R- Richarlison, um, he's on fire at the minute, by the yeah, way. Nine yeah. goals in his last eight Premier League games. But we're going to talk about Villa now in particular. Ollie Watkins, we've got the quiz to come, everybody, by the way. We've got, you win last week? Uh, I did win last week. I absolutely. I know what it's like to be you. I know, it's tough, mate. I think I think I got five points last week. I absolutely battered it, by the way. So, yeah, we've got the quiz coming up where we've got to, obviously, we've got to talk about Manchester United in, in a minute as well apparently the uh, the future's bright with Man United they've got some decent youngsters the new batch they've got the new batch um, yeah the future's bright anyway we've got to talk about uh, Aston Villa though uh, Ollie Watkins he's now got 11 goals and 10 assists in a, the Premier an League an FPL dream an FPL dream I actually had him in the FPL this weekend as well uh, and Villa absolutely flying I was watching this game 5-0 they beat Sheffield United um and at the end of that first half, I was fearing the worst for them. I've been in that position a few times myself, <laughs> and I was fearing the worst for oh, them. It was yes. brutal, wasn't it? What it was brutal. Um, it was a, a great game to watch. Uh, Ethan and I had just got some fish and chips. 5.30 oh. kickoff. Watching the football is Villa mad at the minute, so it was a perfect uh, match for him. But watching the game, Villa were on a different level yeah. for sure. Look, Chef United, Chris Wilder's coming and they've been competitive every game. Home game at Bramall Lane, 30,000 Blades fans. They make it tough, but Villa started, stamped their authority relatively quickly. The one moment Chef United has, really tough save for Martinez. I'd have saved it because of my love handles. I'm not sure about you, but it's the real awkward yeah. position. And if that goes in, maybe different for Chef yeah. United. He managed to save it, so maybe he needs to do some core work and get rid of him a little bit. But it's a good save. But from that moment... It were men against boys, yeah. to be honest with you. Douglas Luiz running the show in midfield. The couple of passes for the oh, first two goals. Wow. Outside no- of the yeah, foot. Honestly, oh. and just to bend it at the back of him. But I'd seen Villa a few weeks before and I'd said, Watkins, the runs and the energy, the energy he shows. That's it. Is, the determination, it, it, it's, that's it, what it is. It's relentless. That sort of player there, Ollie Watkins, right, is a Premier League team's dream. I he promise you. For Arsenal, he, 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 he would honestly get into... Yeah. I think he would get into every Premier League team and he would play. Even if he was at Man City, he would play. He wouldn't play ahead of Ireland, but he would still but play. you see the patterns and the runs it, that they're trying to do. It, oh. Honestly, it was incredible. And, look, I think it was a real tough afternoon for Fothering um, to come back in goal. Yeah. When you know you've been dropped the week before, the guy comes off with concussion, you're back in the team. And I don't want to be overcritical but it just looked like a step too far. Yeah. Mentally, we'll finish yeah, before he started. Yeah, yeah. And you're not blaming him for all the goals that went in, but he just looked shot. Like, the whole team looked yeah, shot, yeah, yeah. to be perfectly honest with you. Villa were phenomenal in that first half. But again, you're talking about set pieces when they got a chance to make it four. I think it got cleared off the line. And then you talk about the setup. There's nobody on the edge of the box for Sheffield United when yeah. Tielemans just takes it down and fires it into the middle Things of the goal. Things that people don't think are big details, but they really yeah. are. The little details are the yeah. big details, v- aren't v- they? Villa worked, worked him a treat, and I always add it towards the end of my time. If you can ring the edge of the box with three players, yeah. you, you're going to get the ball and you're going to get your chances, you know what I mean? And that's actually what they did. They put people in positions to make sure they could ring the box unchallenged, and it will game over. And I mean, to con- I mean, Chris Wilder's going to have gone mad. Just talk about energy, enthusiasm, and to concede the fifth less than two minutes into the second. Half. They've done well to keep it at five, yeah, to be fair, because yeah, anything could have happened. Could, I think Villa have taken their foot off the gas there massively. Like I said, I was fearing the worst for them. Um, what's the buzz around Villa? They're going to get top four because they they're, they're currently two points clear of Spurs, uh, six points clear of Man United. Um, massive game next against Man United. Massive game next at home against Man yeah. United. Um, yeah, I think I think I think Villa are just really really well coached. I think yeah. against Newcastle, I think Emery probably was like admitted Newcastle did them. 
And it's how you bounce back, isn't it? And I think that's always a good sign that after a really humbling result against Newcastle and they've got a great home record, they then go and batter Sheffield United. So I don't, I don't think Villa are going to go anywhere. I think he's got a really good set of players. Um, and it's going to come down to quality, isn't it? I mean, I think Spurs and Villa are probably the favourites to get fourth. United are going to have to beat them next week to be in with it. I, I think if Man United go and do that, you know, then it's then it's back it's on again, you know. Yeah. It's back but, I would, on. but even then, I wouldn't say Villa are out of it because they're still going to go and beat teams. Yeah. Um, but they've had a, they've had a great season. I suppose it's volume of games as well. They've got the. I've always said I think they'll win that Conference League because he'll want to win something, won't he? But it was interesting actually. Just on Sheffield United, I was doing my show on Talksport on Saturday night. A couple of Sheffield United fans phoned in, haven't called in all season. Both said the same thing what can we do it's a quality thing yeah. like we, we just don't have the quality um, and uh, I think I think they're right I think the gap you know, you know when you've got Fulham buying Polina from Sporting Lisbon the Sheffield United's and Luton's and Burnley's and, and whoever else comes up next year they're coming up with like good honest pros who, but they can't compete against the, the, that the, level of quality the, I think for, for a team like Sheffield United but it's, you could say the same for Luton I guarantee you Luton, way, Luton have got a much lesser budget than what Sheffield United are. I guarantee it Right, they'll have the, the lowest budget probably in Premier League history in, in percentage wise no mate not in big history teams. Mate, I play for Barnsley yeah, that would a low that, budget yeah. mate come that. on come in, 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 you were being paid in pie yeah. <laughs> pie and pie and pints. And, and, and pints, yeah. Um, but they will. Luton will have the lowest budget in the Premier League at this moment in time. But what they offer is something a bit different to just relying on quality. When, when they've got a manager who understands it and looks at the whole big picture and goes, right, so we might not have the quality of everybody else, but we can outwork you. We can make it uncomfortable for you. And that's what Luton have done. They've found their niche and they've found what works. It's like what Brentford did, isn't it? Exactly you, that. You can be an exception to the rule, but the percent, higher percentage is that it's difficult. It's just it? Diff- it is difficult and it's not nice. And that's 59 goals now that Sheffield United conceded. And if they go down, I guarantee you, they'll probably be in the playoffs again next Yeah, year. probably will do. And they'll make money from it as well and it's not a bad place to be is it and the fans want to see him win a couple of games exactly it's a good it's like Leicester at the minute in the championship isn't it they're flying week in week out you know you're going to get a good game you're going to get goals you're going to get wins everybody lifts it up hopefully next season in the Premier League they can do well like I say 59 goals were conceded for Sheffield United 23 Premier League games that is the highest amount of goals conceded at this point in the season of any Premier League team Ever so, uh, that's a record that comes away from Lisa. me. So I'm delighted. Oh, is it? Yeah. Was it you that held it before then? Yeah. Oh, weight off your shoulders, what? I was still like a new man today. Weight hey. off. You do. You look younger. You've I, got like. Honestly, is that mate, like a number one or two? Yeah, yeah, side? Trimmed up every. Oh, yeah. mate, honestly, exactly. when that record went this weekend, I was having my fish and chips, and they were saying that's the most goals ever. I'm like, oh, oh. short back and sides for. Come the on. Well. Right, uh, quiz in a minute. But first, we've got to talk about Manchester United. Um, this was a good. I don't know why we last, by the way. I oh, know. I don't know why we last. This is this is Jamie, the producer. Producer, by the way, no, this is yeah. Jamie, the producer. Um, Jamie's going to be crap, then, aren't they? Um, anyway, um, this was a, this was a big win for Man United. Mm. I didn't I didn't think it would be as comfortable as well. And actually, watching the game, it probably wasn't as comfortable with that. But good three 0 win, none left. Yeah, I thought the Hoyland goal was just brilliant. Casemiro's hunger to win that 50-50, and then you know Rasmus is all about the left foot, drops his shoulder and smacks yeah. the shit out of it into the bottom yeah, corner. Good, brilliant, brilliant striker goal. But even then, at half time, people are talking about, oh, can we catch Villa? And I was like. It's 1-0, West Ham are sixth. Yeah. Like, uh, people disrespecting West Ham. They, they were sixth. They're the sixth best team in the Premier League in February. And I thought they played quite well. So I was just like, it's not over yet. And we saw against Wolves. But then straight away, second half, I think Maguire gets caught a little bit. Emerson, big chance. What a cover run by Luke Shaw, by the way. Yeah. The diagonal yeah, to stop yeah, the yeah. cutback. And Emerson sort of looks and goes, shit, I better shoot. And yeah, messes it up. And then we go up the other end and make it 2 And at that point, you think, well, we've probably got that breathing space. So... It wasn't as good, it wasn't as com- uh, commanding a win as it as it maybe looked, but it was a big win. And I think that with the Rashford stuff, which I'm sure you were talking about last week, um, was the way that Ten Hag and the club have handled that. I agreed with it in the minority. I was like, you need to, as a business, he's, it's February, you can't sell him. And the more you drop him, the bigger it becomes yeah, in the yeah, headlines. Yeah, yeah. They pick him, and I don't think it could have gone any better. No, it couldn't because. Not. He scored on Thursday and he was okay, and he was okay yesterday. We've got these three youngsters who've just took the headlines, and that might help Rashford because I think it's always Rashford, Rashford, Rashford. And now you've got Maynou, Hoyland, Ganacho as the young stars, yeah. and maybe Rashford either evolves or leaves or whatever, but it may evolve into being a senior pro. Take the responsibility, 
to help the younger players instead of being the younger player that everyone's like focused on. I think I think that is absolutely perfect. I genuinely agree with that. I think that's absolutely perfect. That's the way it should be now. These three youngsters coming through, and they all look proper players, by the way. Minu, blooming heck. Watching him against Wolves the other night, <laughs> honestly. Like, he looks like he's bloody 25. He, he looks like he's been doing it for years, and that's the best compliment of it. And he seems to just be that sort of guy as well who just wants to go about his business, do it, and then go home as well, which is... Mentality, oof, that, that is exactly what you want to see. But I, I, I totally agree with that. I think if Rashford can then sort of now try and morph into just being this senior pro, a little bit of an older brother who mm. lets them take... I think the, it'll help him as well. Yeah, lets them take the headlines away from him, lets them crack... Because yesterday, he did well yesterday, Rashford, but mm. I didn't really notice him that much. But I liked it like that because it wasn't all the Rashford talk. It was about these three youngsters. The picture on the side of the pitch, it was class, wasn't it? Phenomenal, that. That's, that's yeah. actually what we all love football yeah, for. exactly, yeah. Seeing young players in your team, yeah. but they look like they were playing on the Sunday, Sunday afternoon happy. in the park. Happy playing together. Yeah. Don't matter what the environment is, they were happy to be together playing good football. And actually, it was a really good win. I, I think West Ham were a little bit unlucky to come on the way of a 3-0 yeah. defeat there. I think they had massive moments in the game. Maguire, Maguire got a yeah. couple, oh, got away right, with yeah. a couple. Dallas block oh. on that was... That's a goal, isn't it? That's the, the goal. Sorry, quickly, let me just put in there. But this is, this, is the, this is the part that wins you games. You see that endeavour there, that grit, that determination from Dallow. So that, making that block is so well, important. It's a goal, really. It's, it's it? a goal. But then, like you say, you mentioned the Luke Shaw, him getting back to stop the cutback which in turn means Martinez can sort of look like he's going to press him and put pressure on, which puts doubts in Emerson's brain, which makes him shank it. The, all of it is just from sheer will to want to get and back I don't and think stop it got the ball going back in. Sure thing. It but it's massive. It's, it's so it's important. Massive, yeah. It really is important. Ten Hag will pick it up. I guarantee you, Ten Hag will be watching this back going, Luke Shaw, that's fantastic. And then in training the next day, he'll go, I saw that run back. It's fantastic. But that will sit in Luke Shaw's brain and go, yeah, I need to do that every time. That's the sort of stuff that you need to see. But it's good to see it's finally coming as well. Might have taken a little while, but we're seeing players at Man United with a smile on their face finally, aren't we? I think the return of Martinez, Shaw and Casemiro sort of what was what Ten Hag was resting his job on. Yeah. Because there, there is a movement in the press and in the media and the fan base to remove Ten Hag. And then there's people like myself who are like, look, the results aren't good enough. He's mm. close to the sack, but you've got to hang your hat on these players. And they've come back and the last two games... Lifted it up, haven't Lifted they? him and they've been yeah. better. Of course, Martinez looks like he might be out for a while now. So it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a bit like Newcastle. I, I think for United this season, it's been really hard on injuries. You can't use it as an excuse, but it's really disruptive to not pick the same team week Especially in, week your back four, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we've got, we've, we we're a little bit worried about Martinez with that injury, aren't yeah, we? Well, it don't look great, does it? Having been in the game and knowing how yeah. knees look when they go in a certain way, it's not nice, the right way, it? Didn't it, on yeah. the side. You always feel better when you see him walk off, but then when you saw the slow motion replay... It looks like the cruciate mechanism yeah, to does, me, it, yeah. um, and I hope and pray that it's not for him because he's just had four months out. Man United, for sure, don't need that to happen. Um, but just for the individual, when you, you don't want your season to keep being disrupted, um, and it looks like it could be a bad one, and it's fingers crossed that it's not. But I fear the worst. Yeah, the all season as well. He's come back. He's basically. All season with the foot, come back two games, two games and then and he's so transformative. He's the only centre back we've got that sort of pushes the line up and steps into. He's the really field. confident yeah, playing. Yeah. So it'd be, well, you, you it'd see be. when Dallow makes that block, the first person that he turns around, he's everybody's. All, it's brilliant. I love it. But yeah, hopefully it's nothing too major. Um, quickly before we get into the quiz, we've got to talk about uh, Crystal Palace. Roy Hodgson under some massive pressure at the moment, unfortunately. Um, but the big talking point from this Palace game, they obviously they got pumped. You know, it was four one. It was a disappointing loss. But the big talking point is um, Michael Elise. Mm. So apparently the the game before he's got a bit of a hamstring injury. Um, I want to I want to I want to get your perspective on it, Wild, because having worked in that environment, having worked behind the scenes in football clubs, how does it work then when a player has got an injury, he can't play the game before, or he can play the game before, he's not feeling great, but then you're three 0 down against your rivals and then you bring that player on how does that work why does that work like that honestly this this will have been going around crystal palace's training ground for four days before yeah. this game yeah. obviously having had the midweek game it will have been rattled about down in the medical department first before they even take it to the manager and yeah. coach's office the reality is there's a doctor involved yeah there's a physio involved. Multiple physios. Yeah. There's the a laptop. There's, yeah. a, there's a sports <laughs> scientist in, involved for sure with all the data. Yeah. And you've got the player. 
You'll have, you'll probably uh, have a gym, gym, somebody from the gym as well who will be yeah the strength and conditioning strength guy. And conditioning, doing so a little bit you, of... you've got five or six people involved in a conversation. That's before it gets anywhere near the manager's yeah. door, right? And it is a world of pain for the manager and the coach because he might have, be, well, for sure he's been told before that game he cannot start that game. Yeah, he cannot start that game. But what we are saying to you is, we we think he's probably good for half an hour. Yeah. But what you get with that half an hour is he doesn't warm up like he'd warm up before the game. Yeah. But when the manager's told he's good for half an hour, mm -hmm. then the manager, you, you're getting pumped at half time. It's your biggest rivals. You know you're under the cosh. You think he can change the game. Now, normally, you've had these conversations before. You're in the heat of the battle. Whether Roy's had the calmness at half time just to say to the doctor, the sports scientist, the physio, look, I'm bringing him on. Are we all happy with it? Or he's just gone, boom, I'm putting him on. But if he's on the bench for Roy to make that decision, he knows he's good to go for some certain amount of minutes. Yeah. For sure. And it will have been banded for hours, probably, this conversation. It would have been hours. Hours and hours. Yeah, because he's a massive player for him. And Roy is going on what he's been told. Yeah. So if he's good to go, he's good to go. But it looks so bad. Yeah. It looks so bad for everybody yeah. when that happens. This is this is where I think just sort of it just just a conversation between the manager and the player. Michael, how was it feeling? If if we if this scenario, if this scenario, would you would you be happy coming on? Would you be happy coming on? But I feel for Roy in this situation as well, though, because he's been told, yeah, he's good for probably half an hour. Yeah. So. He's got so many other things to worry about and contend with. So many players, so many different things, tactics, that he, he all he knows is he's got half an hour, Michael Elise, that's it. But in all honesty, somebody here, this is where somebody behind the scenes should have probably had the balls to say, let's just leave him out. I think as well, if, if it's like 70 minutes and you bring him on for the last 20, I think Roy's more culpable. Yeah. But it's half-time. Yeah. It's a half-time sub, so he's yeah. thinking... Game of two halves, yeah. get him on, 3-0, yeah, yeah, yeah. might get a quick one. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I, I'm with, with you two on this. I think it comes down to balls behind Hodgson. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what it is. Now, yeah, every, we, we know Roy's a great guy, but when you're under pressure as a manager, even going into that game, even though they beat Sheffield United, it's, it's, it's a big game, it's yeah. the biggest derby. You've, you've potentially one of your stars out of the show. Have they got the balls to say, Roy, you got to leave that, that that's, the, that's the thing. That's why I feel sorry for Roy Hodgson in all of this as well, because the, the, you know what it's like at football clubs. If you've got one of your good players who's got this little injury, this little niggle, they will be doing all they can, the medical staff, like say all the people that you named there, the doctors, to say, come on, let's just let's just keep it. Let's just, because they don't want to go to the manager and say he's injured, he's out, he's not available. The manager wants his best players, obviously. Mm. But so then what they do is they try and sort of just let's let's just please let's just, just cajole a little cajole it and then when he does actually get on the pitch they're all just praying and please just please just please and this has all backfired spectacularly so it's not one person's fault it's not one person's problem there is so many people involved in this whole thing we're going to go to the quiz anyway uh, it's a rubbish situation uh, Michael and Lise I hope it's nothing serious we want to see you back soon because what a player by the way Emineze eh, together wow without them two Crystal Palace nowhere near a fantastic win for Brighton but it is time for the quiz boys uh, let me just give you the scores and doors Mark on 7 I'm on 6 what I'm on 5 it's finally poised it's quiz time are you ready? Yeah. I'm ready come on let's go Right then, boys, quiz time. Bring your Ray game. Let's go, Jamie. Ten questions, yeah? Yeah, are we ready? Okay. Yeah. Question one. Which club has won the most Scottish Premier League titles? Rangers. Celtic. Rangers is the correct answer. Rangers. One, or, one or two, though, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I, where was I going to go? Aberdeen. <laughs> well, funny you say that. Rangers won it 55 times. Celtic, 53. Aberdeen, 4. Yeah. There you go. One, Close two, then, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to say like 40 yeah. Hey, hold on a minute. What about this Aberdeen? Neil Warner is supposed to be winning as manager. Shut mm. your mouth. Honestly, that's the rumour. That tells you how the standard uh, is. Pitodri. Uh, Pitodri. Come on. So, 1 0 to Ben. Question two. Which club did Jurgen Klopp manage before Dortmund. winning Liverpool? Dortmund, wow. to create a dancer. Oh, I've been away one week and wow. what's going on? You've swallowed a bloody one. encyclopedia or something. Wow. Yeah, but you were quick on the first one. Have <laughs> I don't have time to breed. Okay. He joined Liverpool in 2015. Yeah. Question three. How many goals were scored in the five games on Saturday? 22. Game week? No. This is really tough. Uh, 34. No. Five. 25. No, it was 26. Oh! Yeah. 
So it's the most goals ever scored on a Saturday where there's only been a maximum of five games, yeah. 26 ever Decent. in the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable at the stats, Jay. Unbelievable. Shame he didn't say closest, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> he didn't say closest. <laughs> Question four. Pedro Porro signed for Spurs in 2023, Sporting but which Lisbon. other Premier League side did he sign for in 2019? Not Sporting Lisbon, because they're not Premier League team. Oh, Premier... Can, you say, can you say it again? Because I, I got lost halfway. Pedro Porro signed for Spurs in 2023, but which other Premier League signed, side did he sign for in 2019? I've never heard this. I've never known he's played in the Premier League before or signed for anybody. Mm. He sounds like a West Ham signing. Not Ooh, a West Ham. I'd have gone with that. Yeah. No. I'd never heard of that. I didn't know that. Chelsea. No, it's Manchester City. He never made an what? appearance, but he did I sign for it him. Thought it bigger than What, signed. alone or what? No, he signed for him permanent. How much? Then, I don't know how much, unfortunately. Yeah. Never we'll find out. We'll I find out. I want to say like, four, no, not 40 mil, but I, I don't it. know why that rings it's a bell. It's a biggie and then loan them back yeah, out and yeah. do all that stuff. Jamie should know because he's a Man City now. Yeah, you Formerly go, you a know. Chelsea fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you changed? Have you changed? No, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me that. After light that, blue now, light blue. Yeah. He moved in 2009 <laughs> for free. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> Jamie, you should just deny it. You've not you've actually... supported three teams this season. I have not supported what, them. What three teams did he support? No, 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 I'm not having this. Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City. Yeah, whoever's Edging winning. <laughs> that is not true, by the way. Question five. Which former Middlesbrough striker is currently the captain of La Liga High Flyers, Girona? Which former Middlesbrough striker is currently captain of La Liga High Flyers, Girona? Branthwaite? No. Is it Braithwaite or Branthwaite? No, no. Ramirez? No. Who? Gaston. Gaston. Gaston oh, Ramirez. I, 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 can't, I, I can't think of anyone. I, Middlesbrough, fuck knows. Don't know. Alaves. No, I'll give you all clue. He is Uruguayan. <laughs> Doesn't help at all. But that thanks for that, Jay. You're all looking at Luke. <laughs> It was it was Luke's question, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a goodie, Luke. Are you require striker. Mm. I can only think of Suarez Cavani, Forlan. <laughs> the answer is Christian Stuani. Ah, no, no chance, no chance. Oh, 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 Did he play for Spurs? Hey, they've had some team, Girona. Yeah, you know? they're second, they're second in the in the Liga, and uh, Real Madrid above them by like oh, two points. Oh, it is. Owned by Man City, though. They, they were top though. They drew them. He supports them. Yeah. No, <laughs> don't support yeah. them. Spanish team. You've just shown him the questions. Yeah. Uh, you, you see it? I didn't look. I wouldn't I look. I wouldn't look. I can't read. Duncan Blast on. Question six. We've got a manager career path. Oh, you good at them? <laughs> <laughs> I have managed Preston North End, Everton. Moyes. David Moyes. David Moyes as what time? No, he said yeah. Moyes, all right? He oh, said my God. Don't be clutching at nothing, Paul. If I hadn't said David, I'd have been in. Yeah. He was first. So Watto gets the answer. 2 1 0. 2 1 0. Wow. Question seven. Can you name one of the five managers who took charge of Chelsea and Spurs in their managerial? Villa Bass. Mourinho. I said it. I said Mourinho first. I want to say. I want to say Goldbridge. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say Goldbridge. Say <laughs> Goldbridge, then say it and say it with some conviction. I went Mourinho. Uh, yeah, I think so. So you had uh, Andre Villa Boas, uh, Conte, Glenn Hoddle, Mourinho, and Poch. Yeah. One one. One one two. How many questions there? I'll give it, yeah, but I was... Uh, VAR. If it's contentious... Already, give it to the Luke. VAR, mate. Right. VAR. Luke's on VAR. I'll give it, yeah. 2 one, one. 2 one, How one. many have you got left? Three questions remaining. Question eight. Red Bull own a football club based in which Austrian Austria. city? Salzburg. Salzburg. <laughs> <laughs> the correct this answer. Is... <laughs> no! <laughs> no, mate! It's what it is! It's reality, pal! Salzburg is a correct answer. Oh, you were so you were helping me so much there. It was really kind of you. That's a team, that mate. That's a team. Great one, one. Question nine. Two questions left. Who was the first non-British manager to win the Premier League? Mourinho. No. Fuck me. Have I not got that? Who was the first non-British manager to win the Premier League? Wenger. Wenger's the correct answer. <laughs> he won it in 1997, 98 season. Yeah. Stupid old. Stupid old. Final question to take it to a tiebreaker or to get what to win. Tomato. Yeah, You're come on. Such a come party on, pooper. <laughs> question 10. Which French player has won the FIFA World Cup as both captain and manager? Zidane. No. 
The Shumps. The Shumps is the Come on! <laughs> this is what we live for. This is what we live for, what Yes. Yeah, that true. was inspired. He loves that. Yes. Oh, Tiebreaker. <laughs> Even He's Luke was this. going for it then. Even Luke was giving me one of them then. He's marking this. No. No. Mark's I've had a right breaker, stinker. No. I had a week off. Right, it's a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker question. We've got to the 10 questions. Done. It's three all between me and Watto. Finally, poised. it's tiebreaker time. It's a, it's a biggie, this. This is a biggie, this. It's a biggie, this. Are we ready? Born Tie ready. Breaker. Born ready, mate. Which player scored the most goals in one half in the Premier League, scoring five goals? Jermaine Defoe. Jermaine Defoe is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> He's done it. I swear you'll never see his own Disaster! Well done, Ben. Well done. It's like, oh Man, my. it's like Man City coming back and beating the underdog. It's just not. Do you know what it's like? It's, it's like I've just got a certain gone and twisted it. That's what that was there. That is one for the that's one for the record books. That's for the one ages. For, for, the, for ages. the ages, the history books. People will look back on this. Oh my gosh. Can you I've believe it? Feet from the jaws of victory. Yeah, exactly. That's what's happened there. All right, they were some of the best questions I've ever seen from you today. You know that. Some of the best questions I've ever seen from you. You did a great job as well. I've, I've one week off and I've lost it. The magic's gone. Wait, hold on. Look at the scores. Look at the scores on the doors. We've got a new joint leader up there with Marky Boy. And that's me on seven. Uh, what oh, stay on five. It's absolutely fine. Uh, Mark on seven. Me on seven. Uh, what oh, on five. Thank you, everybody, for watching the football fill-in. World class, as always. The we'll tears will come in a moment.